Hey everyone and welcome to part two of my vegan family recipe series. Today we're going to make a dinner recipe that is cozy and comforting and perfect for the winter months. It was inspired by a family recipe that a viewer sent in so I'm going to tell you all about that and teach you how to make this vegan version of authentic Romanian Sarmali. Thank you to Thrive Market for teaming up with me and let's get started. One of the things I love about food is that it can be so much more than just food. So a lot of times just day to day, you gotta get food on the table, you gotta eat and move on with your day. And in that case, food is very much sometimes just fuel or a quick little pleasure to punctuate your day, right? But it's just a meal. But other times food can be a window, and I'm paraphrasing a lot of people by saying this, but essentially it can be a window that teaches you about another culture. It can be your starting point to learn about history, maybe even your own family history and traditions and you can learn so much about a people or a group of people and a culture through their cuisine. And I think it's such a fun starting point that really has taught me so much. And I love learning about the different cuisines of the world as kind of a starting point or as that window into learning about history on a broader scale. And so last year around this time, I did a family recipe for my grandma's Norwegian meatballs. I veganized it and it's one of my favorite recipe videos I've ever made because it's really special to me. It's more than food. It's more than just a meal. It's a comforting, familiar family favorite that I grew up eating and when I went vegan I really tried to veganize it and experiment with different ways of doing it and it took me a while before I got it right but when I finally did get it right and I tasted those same flavors that I remember but without the animal products it was such a good feeling and my family really loved it and it was so nice to know that I could still you know keep our culture alive and celebrate the foods and the flavors that we all love in my family just without the animal products and so in that video I asked you guys to send me your family recipes that are special to you that you would like me to veganize because I know that sometimes it can be tricky and so many of you wrote to me and I saved them all in a file and I have been practicing a lot of them but I'm not going to share the recipes for those videos until I feel confident that I have done enough research I've done enough sort of practicing because I know that family recipes are special and I want to do them justice so I finally have one for you today and I'm really really proud of it it is for a Romanian style cabbage roll and it's exactly what it sounds like it's cabbage leaves stuffed with some kind of filling, usually a mix of meat and rice and herbs, and usually simmered in some kind of sauce, which is typically a tomato sauce. But lots of different countries around the world make their own version of cabbage rolls. They're thought to have originated in Turkey, and in fact, the word sarmale comes from the Turkish word sarmak, which means to wrap or to roll. So you can see how that came about. But you can find cabbage rolls in Turkey, in the Balkans, in Romania, Moldova, Hungary, Poland, the Ukraine, Russia, even Sweden and Finland have a version that instead of having tomato sauce has lingonberry jam, which as a Norwegian, I'm a big fan of, but I've never seen a cabbage roll like that. So I thought that was really cool. They also have them in Egypt, China, and there's Korean cabbage rolls, Estonia, Albania, North Macedonia, Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, and Bulgaria. And this was inspired by an email that I got from a viewer named Alita. I had to get my glasses, but she wrote, Hey Nikki. I love your channel so much. I take pretty much all of my inspiration in cooking vegan meals from your website and your channel. You inspire me. I'm originally from Romania, but now live in Dallas, Texas, going to graduate school for social work. And sarmale is a big traditional food in Romania that we eat during the holidays, such as Christmas and New Year's. It's something that my grandma has made for us every single year growing up, and I always have loved it. Even if you don't end up making this, I am still super excited about this new series on your channel. Thank you for being you. So a couple months ago, I had a Zoom with Alita and with her dog. Zara. Is Zara there? Hi Zara! <laughs> and we talked about this recipe and I got to ask her a lot of questions because I learned about Romanian cabbage rolls because there's so many different countries that make cabbage rolls and there's so many different ways to make them. And what I learned about Romanian sarmale is that a lot of times they will use pickled cabbage. It's essentially like the whole head of cabbage is pickled and it gives it a really nice kind of vinegary flavor. But because I'm veganizing Alita's grandmother's recipe, I wanted to keep it as similar to her family's recipe and what they know and what they're used to. Do you guys do that or is it just like the traditional cabbage roll? I've never heard of that, but that sounds like, it sounds good like that too. I think it would be like a, a vinegary taste. I'm actually happy to hear you say that because um, it's a little bit harder to find. And if that was going to be really traditional, I wanted to include it. But if it's not that important, then I want to, like I'd rather leave it out just because it makes it easier for people to recreate it at home. So that's good. 
So we're just gonna go ahead and start with some regular green cabbage that you can find at the grocery store. And all we're gonna do is remove the stem and this will help to open up the cabbage and while it boils, which is just gonna boil for a couple minutes to soften it up, the leaves will very easily peel off because we've made that cut in the bottom. I like to cover almost all the way to the top with water in a big pot and sprinkle with salt. And I actually use two cabbages for this recipe. Next, we're gonna make the filling, and I went back and forth between trying recipes that had only vegan meat or only plant-based versions, and I actually found that my favorite was a mix of the two. So I start with some mushrooms, and you wanna cook them undisturbed for a few minutes so they get nice and brown, and a lot of the moisture kind of cooks out of the mushrooms. We'll add some onions and garlic, and then just a couple of spices. We're gonna do regular paprika, salt, and pepper. Add that to the pan to bloom the spices and make them super flavorful. And then we're gonna add some uncooked rice and stir this all together. So that's the plant-based half. And then the other half is gonna be some vegan beef. This adds a really great texture and flavor. And we're gonna put that into the bowl along with the rice and the mushrooms and the spices and add lots of flavor with some fresh parsley, fresh dill, and some vegan Worcestershire sauce. This gives it a lot of depth and a lot of meaty flavor. Go ahead and mix this on up just like you're making a meatloaf or meatballs and set that aside. Now the cabbage is nice and soft, and as you can see, we can just easily peel off the leaves. You want to trim or remove the inner rib, but don't worry, nothing's going to waste, especially in old-fashioned recipes like this. You really make the most of every single part of the ingredients that you're using, so we just kind of set the rib aside, and then I put the leaves together like this. You're gonna scoop about two tablespoons to three tablespoons of the filling into the top third, the one that's closest to you, and then tuck in the sides as you roll forward, and you wanna do this fairly tightly, but it doesn't have to be too tight because if it's too tight, it can actually open up while it's cooking. So you want to make it nice and snug. So I kind of fold it over, fold in the sides and then roll forward. And I just use my fingers to kind of tuck everything in as I go. And you're just going to repeat the process with all of the leaves and all of the filling. Then you may remember we sliced out some of the ribs of the leaves just because when that's part of the leaf still, it's actually hard to roll. It kind of bends and breaks a little bit and it's just easier to remove it. And then I finally chop it and I'm gonna place this in the bottom of the bowl. And you can do this with the ribs of the leaves and any broken leaves or piece of cabbage that you're just not able to roll with the filling. You can chop it up nice and finely and put it on the bottom as kind of like a bed for the cabbage rolls to rest on. So then I place the cabbage rolls on top you want them to fit together nicely so they hold their shape but not too compact to where it's like really really tight and this is going to either simmer on the stove or bake in the oven I like to bake it in the oven and it's going to infuse that rice and those veggies and the cabbage with all of the flavor of the onions and the spices it's so good another thing that I learned about Romanian sermale is that there's sometimes some bacon or smoked meat on top of the actual cabbage rolls and that really renders down while it's cooking it gives it a nice smoky flavor and gives the sauce a richness because the fat kind of cooks out slowly as the sauce is simmering and it enriches that sauce with fat and flavor. So to mimic that, I'm adding in a little bit of tomato paste. This is going to add a nice richness and also a little bit of an umami quality. I'm also adding some smoked paprika because the smoky bacon would give kind of a subtle smoky flavor to the sarmale and it would kind of infuse into the sauce and therefore into the cabbage rolls and just create another layer of flavor and a little bit of depth. So we're gonna mimic that with some smoked paprika. They add a little pinch of sugar and this is just to balance the natural acidity of the tomatoes so it's not going to make the sauce sweet at all it's just going to give a little bit of balance and it's going to kind of soften those sharp edges of the acidity that the tomatoes naturally have finally i add a spoonful of oil and this is really going to again enrich the sauce in the same way that the bacon would but all without animal products While the vegan sermale was simmering, I went ahead and I placed an order on Thrive Market because I'm gonna be heading back to Florida. And in fact, while you're watching this, I'm gonna be at home in Florida with my family for the holidays. And whenever I do that, I like to order my groceries and have them sent over there because that way I don't have to go to the store when I'm with my family. I don't have to run an errand. I can just be there with them and we can have all kinds of fun snacks for movie nights and also just staples for like easy dinners throughout the week. So I loaded up and I thought it'd be fun to show you what I got. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store 
store and every single member saves money when they shop on Thrive Market because you can actually see the discount right at the bottom. And for every membership that Thrive receives, they also give one to a teacher, a student, a veteran, a first responder, or a family in need. And you can also shop your values on the website so you can type in vegan, you can type in organic, you can type in gluten-free, and everything that you don't want to see basically goes away. And so it makes shopping really, really easy. You can sign up to become a member for one month or for one year. So definitely take advantage of the link in the description box below. I hope showing you my grocery haul gave you some good ideas and let's get back to the recipe. I serve some of the cabbage rolls up on a platter like this and I like to top with a zigzag of sour cream or you can serve some sour cream on the side to dollop on top. I also like to sprinkle some fresh herbs like the same herbs that are inside so I did dill and parsley on top with some black pepper and you guys this is so good and it's really amazing how hearty and flavorful and tender the center of these cabbage rolls becomes and it's really amazing because most of it is vegetables and rice with a little bit of vegan meat and it just really has this hearty meaty filling quality that is just super satiating and comforting. You can serve this with some boiled potatoes and roasted veggies for a hearty, comforting, authentic Romanian style meal that's perfect for a holiday or festive occasion. One of the things that's really fun about kind of expanding your culinary horizons and trying recipes and styles of cuisines that you've never made before is that a lot of times it involves an ingredient that you're familiar with, but you haven't used in that particular way. So for example, as a Norwegian, I'm very familiar with dill. We use dill in a lot of different things, but it was really interesting to use dill with a beef product. That's not something that I've done in the past. And I really love the way that the combination of the dill and the parsley and the paprika and the onions and the the garlic really worked to create a very intensely savory filling and it was totally it was like a different it was a different side of dill. I've never had dill taste quite like that because usually when I have dill, it's with potatoes and lemon and it's like a brighter kind of pasta salad sort of Thing, you know, but using it in this way taught me that wow dill can have this whole other flavor profile And it can really lend itself to meat dishes and be savory and I love that because with cooking There's always so much to learn and there's just no shortage of new recipes to try new cuisines to try And like I said, they can really open you up to learning about the history Which is what uh, this process did for me. So thank you so much to Alita for sharing her family's recipe I hope you and your family enjoy this one and that I did your grandma's recipe justice. I think that it's so cool that we can veganize these really classic, important, traditional recipes in our own families and be the ones that can show them like, hey, this we can still have everything the same just without the animals. And I think that's really powerful. So I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. It's going to be in the description box below. If you'd like to send me your family recipes, please do. It's going to take me some time to get it because like I said, I really value family recipes. I want to practice and make sure I get it right. But I'm really happy with the way this one turned out and I can't wait to do more. So go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box as well. I hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget to check out the link below to try Thrive Market and I will see you guys in the new year right? Is that the, is this? Yeah. Yeah. I will see you in the new year. Bye.